everyone, this is Casey, and this is the final part of, uh, of what I do to bring animation from Pencil into a program like Illustrator or Photoshop, and ultimately get it in a, in a format that's ready for 2D video games. So the first part, when us, uh, we went over uh, you know, using Pencil to do all the animation. The second part was a matter of copying the uh, the area you know the the content and pasting it in Illustrator as uh, as shown here um, and the, this third part is going to be all right so we have all the rough animation here now I'm I'm actually going to color it so so all right so this is this is what I tend to do. Normally, before I actually even get here, I have some kind of like uh, I do a little color pass before I start applying the color to to all of the frames. So um, I'm just going to lock some of these layers just so I don't move things around by mistake. So I'm just going to move these down a little bit. So you know, I I just use Illustrator. It could, you know, like I said, this could be Illustrator, Photoshop doesn't really matter to to color the character. Uh, with this character, I'm using a lot of different radial uh, blends uh, just to give you know a sense of depth with certain things. Um, I'm using uh, some texture to give a little bit of um, of just uh, you know texture to the character. I'm using some metal gradients to to help with turning these um, these spikes into be, be, you know having that shiny element. So I do a whole like design pass on that um, to to get there, and then once I have that design done, I um, n then I'm ready to basically uh, apply it to all of the frames. So when it comes to um, this character specifically, there's a big area of his body. There's a big area of his body that ha doesn't have any animation that's moving. So what I do is actually I think this one right here might even be the um, the same frame as this. So I'm just going to move this up right to there. And it seems like it almost perfectly you know fits. Um, so I'll just use that as a, as a starting point. And what I want to do to 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 continue to make sure that this animation. Um, that all of the core areas do not shift um, between frames is as I explained earlier in the in uh, part two there's I, I use these tiles right that represent the full space that that each of these animations share right so I'm uh, oh gotta take out the trash <laughs> um, so I'm just going to select this content right here, actually, uh, and I want to unlock this tile map layer during this part of the process. So I'm going to select it like that, and I have some more guides on, and I'm going to copy it. I'm sorry. I'm going to drag it and see how it locks to 128. I'm going to let go. But before I let go, if you look at the outline of this character, you see that the main body is uh it's practically aligned but I mean you know my pencil is uh you know me drawing that wasn't perfect but this circle is perfect because it was created in Illustrator. So I just wanted to have exact alignment to the to the one next to me. So I'm just you know I'm just that 128 shows me that it's exactly 128 pixels away. So I'm just gonna drop it there. Now with this frame I'm just gonna shift this color just a little bit, just so I could, just so I know the difference between the different. Uh, I always like difference b between the different background frames. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to adjust the animation that's going on in this one. So I'm just shifting these around, just so, uh, just so they, you know, they have the animation that that frame is supposed to have. Now you'll notice, like uh, with Smart Guide Salon, when you do when you do very small moves, sometimes it jumps between things. 
I don't like that so that's when I have to shut this thing off so I I ultimately just copy each frame you know let me just turn it back on 256 and it's always gonna be a whole number whenever you drop it it's like 128 256 384 512 and so forth um, so they're always gonna be whole numbers so that's that's the number you want to look for so once again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two frames here I'm just gonna turn off oh, command U turns off smart guides so I'm just gonna shift this over shift this so it's the same thing and the same with this and that's what I'm going to do for each of the things so just just to recap the process is I'm going to you know make sure that this is once again turned on I'm selecting this content and I'm just copying it to the next to the next tile area C384 and then I'm just adjusting um, the frames that are actually moving and then in the end what I get to is I'll come to having it look like this which is all of the frames um, with their with their animation and if I just hide the pencil animation layer you'll see all the frames in animation without like any extra stuff and if I hide the the background layer which represents the different tiles you're gonna see all of the frames just sitting there in space and that's exactly what we want in the end so at this point you, you know your work is done all you need to do from here is just save for web and devices uh, in most cases you're always gonna save out as PNG 24 because as I mentioned in the the last uh, um, part of the tutorial you know it gives you full transparency and that's exactly what you need uh, and that's what most game systems use nowadays too and you just hit save and uh, name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it that. It's going to replace it. And there you go. There's a uh, there's the whole process that I use. Um, now I you know just 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 uh, mention you know you, you see I use Illustrator a lot for this pro for for the part of the process. Some people may feel that you know there's um, uh, it may be p faster just doing it you know in pixel in pixel you know using a raster program like uh, Photoshop or GIMP but this is what uh, I find very useful so I have this and I'm going to save for web right but image size you know I want this character to be humongous so I'm going to do a 4096 I'm gonna apply this and guess what it's going to render and it's gonna still look just as good you see how clean that is that's the power of vector if you have if you're doing this raster base you won't have that now at the same time you know, uh, it does take it, it it does take longer um, depending on what kind of design approach you're using um, to create all of the coloring inside Illustrator. But it is flexible at the same time. So I mean, if you did want to qu very quickly change certain, you know, a certain swatch to something else, let's say, let's say we want it blue, you know, blue within this tile, right, or within that uh, that gradient. I would just copy this new gradient and then I'd select all the different ones that use that like this and just click that and it has a new color so you know it, it does have some nice quick there's even faster approaches too but um you know that's kinda like why I use Illustrator for my part of the you know my workflow when it comes to taking my animation and bringing it into uh, making it ready for a game so I hope uh, this whole thing was was useful to you and uh, and if I come across uh, other things that I'd like to share um, other techniques that I use I'll definitely be posting them